In this discovery video, we feature the song called Life's Been Good from Joe Walsh. Joe is a guitar player, singer, songwriter, really an amazing kind of a guy. Plays with the Eagles. That's his mothership, but then he also has an amazing, flourishing solo career. This is one of his most popular songs. And you don't think of it as having keyboard parts, but there are keyboard parts in this song, more than you'd expect when you first hear it. And uh, I'm here to break it down for you here on the Nord Stage 4. So I've got two scenes happening. Let me start by just going through the song part by part. So the song starts out, let's just reintroduce you to the song here. Might be a while since you've heard this one. Here it is. Start with a kick and a snare. Just so simple yet effective. And then of course Joe's guitar kicks in right after that. Listen to that. People don't play guitar like that. Except Joe Walsh. Now as the song builds up, we're going to be playing Kind of a honky-tonk piano, A minor. I'm using the pearl upright with a bright setting. Then the break. We have a guitar coming in. Now we're going to switch scenes. And we've got uh, two splits, with three zones. I'll break each one down for you here. First, the organ on the right side. At this point, you'll want to hold the organ through these chords. I've got the Leslie speaker, so it's giving it that rotary sound. And then you'll hold the A here. Okay, so that's how that works. Now, here we get to an important part of the song and perhaps the hardest thing to duplicate. It's right after this organ part. We're going to play the A key down here at the same time we hold the A chord up here. And you'll hear that synth part. Every two measures you want to re-strike this. Play it very quietly, you'll still get the same volume synth. Then loud here on that third one, and about half on the fourth one. Do you hear the synth? We're going to play that here. You want to play it legato. Now everything breaks away, you want to hold this A in the right hand while having the pedal, the control pedal, all the way back. You want to strike this again, but quietly strike it so that the piano doesn't come through. I'll explain this in a second. Then bring the pedal up. Okay, so that's that part, and let's just break that down just for a second because it's worth talking about. So on this split here, on the far most left side of the split, we have a sample on A, on the A key. Let me take it off the piano for a second. And that is from the actual recorded album. And you just push it every two measures and you're good to go. Along with that, I have the G programmed down here. And back up to the A. 
Now, commingled with that is the piano. And because the piano is so touch sensitive, if I play it ever so quietly, the sample plays at the regular full volume while the piano can be barely heard. See, I can't even really hear the piano at this point if I'm playing very quietly. But when you need the piano to come in, just land on that key harder. That way I don't have to do any changes. It's all based on my performance. Back down to the G, I do about a medium here. Although you don't really hear piano on that G part. You hear it more on the A part. Now while you're doing all that, in this split. And I've got the pedal, if this is all the way back on the pedal, I've got the pedal maybe a third in when I'm playing this. If the pedal was all the way back, you'd hear less uh, brightness. But about one third up. I think works out pretty well. Then towards the end of this, when you're holding this, you don't you want to play it very quietly so the piano doesn't come through. And you want to try to get your, your tempo correct. See, I'm playing right on the beat. Then you're holding this the whole time. And you want to start with the pedal all the way back. I'm going to bring this down a little, because I think it should be closer to here. There we go, that's good. Now bring the pedal up. And it'll brighten it up for you as you bring the pedal up. In fact, I think I want that pedal to also bring up the volume a touch. So if the volume is here, I want to start here where the knob is. I'm going to hold the control pedal and I'm going to bring it up, let's say from 14 to 11, just ever so slightly. Now let's listen then. I'm going to play it one more time here and I'll build it up. Here comes the pedal. Did you see the volume move ever so slightly? Because it's just, look, the, the difference between my pedal being all the way back to all the way forward is just that much. And sometimes it's just that much for the subtleties you need. You don't need big morphs all the time. Yeah, I'll build it up. So there, now that's a permanent part of this. You're seeing it change live here. So let me just reset like that there. That's good, and I'm going to push store. Because this one is at full volume, that's the sample. And it wouldn't hurt to have that even a little louder. Yeah, I'll just add a little high end on the EQ. I don't want anything on the middle, just the high end. Not too much, though. So I put a positive plus three on the EQ just for the sample. Let me add some bass, see what happens. Well, that sounds pretty good. We don't want it too loud. I'll do positive three on the bass too. We'll leave the mid just where it is, just for that sample. Okay, so that takes care of that. That's good, we'll store. There, you've witnessed a live change and kind of got into my head a little bit too. Got that, and then this. So now definitely because I've lowered the synth volume when you're doing this part. Of course you'll have the piano there now. And I didn't save the piano with that last store. So let me save it because the piano was off at the time. So Perfect. Those blend a lot better now than it did just a moment ago. And then of course the piano on scene two. And of course, that's easy to adjust the volume. If you find it's too little loud, a little quiet, you can adjust here, depending on how loud the band is playing, right? So that takes care of Joe Walsh playing Life's Been Good on the Nord Stage 4.